In 2022, the Texas Navy Association celebrated its 50th anniversary, marking a half century of working to preserve the history, legacy, and spirit of the Navy of the Republic of Texas. This offers a good opportunity to look back briefly on the history of the Texas Navy and how it is remembered today. The original, or first, Texas Navy was established by the Provisional Government Meeting at San Felipe on the Brazos River in November 1835, just as the Texas Revolution was beginning to pick up steam. The Provisional Government authorized the purchase of four small warships, the Schooners Liberty, Independence, Brutus, and Invincible. These vessels intercepted Mexican shipping off the Texas coast, captured supplies desperately needed by the Texian army, and conducted raids far to the south along the Yucatan Peninsula, forcing the government in Mexico City to devote resources to protect that coastline and helping to relieve the threat they posed to Texas. Unfortunately, all four of the ships were lost by the fall of 1837. Beginning in late 1838, the Republic of Texas began rebuilding its navy, bigger than before. The new fleet consisted of a ship-rigged sloop of war as the flagship, Austin, two brigs, Archer and Wharton, and three schooners, San Bernard, San Antonio, and San Jacinto, and a large steamship, Zavala. Because this larger squadron was established more than a year after the loss of all four of the Navy's original ships, this force is sometimes called the Second Texas Navy. This Second Texas Navy was very active during the few years of its existence. Under the command of a former U.S. naval officer, Edwin Moore, the Texas Navy formed alliances with rebellion movements in the Yucatan Peninsula that, like Texas, were fighting the centralist Mexican government in Mexico City. This alliance culminated in May 1843 when Moore, commanding two Texian warships and a collection of Yucatecan gunboats, defeated two Mexican warships, Montezuma and Guadalupe. It is said to be the only time in history that sailing ships defeated steam-powered ships in open combat. But this second Texas Navy faced even greater challenges than the steamships and shell-firing guns of the Mexican fleet. The Navy was caught between two opposed visions of the future of the Texas Republic, embodied in two of the Republic's presidents, Mirabeau Lamar and Sam Houston. Lamar, who served from December 1838 to December 1841, envisioned Texas becoming a great continental power, perhaps someday stretching to the Pacific Ocean. Lamar's foreign policy was aggressive, and it was under his administration that the Second Texas Navy was established, outfitted, and took to the seas to harass Mexican shipping and taking Texas' ongoing struggle against Mexico to waters far away from the Texas coast. Sam Houston, who succeeded Lamar in December 1841, had an entirely different view. He remained focused on bringing Texas into the United States and saw the continual fighting with Mexico on both land and sea to be a barrier to that. Commodore Moore and the Texian Navy posed a particular challenge to Houston's grand strategy by conducting operations hundreds of miles from the Texas coast, beyond the president's direct control, and actively aiding the rebels in Yucatan. Eventually Houston even proclaimed that Moore and his officers were pirates, to be hunted down and captured by the civilized nations of the world. After the Texian squadron returned from the Battle of Campeche in the summer of 1843, Houston ordered the ships mothballed at Galveston, the officers and crews dismissed, and the remaining Navy stores to be sold off at auction. Moore was court-martialed and acquitted, but it was the end of the Texas Navy as a fighting force. The remaining ships and supplies were transferred to the U.S. Navy after annexation. There was renewed interest in the story of the Texas Navy in the 1930s, with the centennial of the Texas Revolution. In the foreword to a history of the Texas Navy published at the time, Theodore Roosevelt Jr., son of the former president and an international traveler and author in his own right, effectively summed up the legacy of the Texas Navy. It is no exaggeration to say that without it, there would probably have been no Lone Star Republic and possibly the state of Texas would still be a part of Mexico. The Navy was unquestionably largely responsible for the victory that Houston won at San Jacinto. It blocked reinforcements for Santa Ana. 
it forced him for lack of supplies to alter his plan of campaign at a crucial moment. While doing all this it was struggling under tremendous handicaps. It was makeshift. Its material was wretched, and its personnel was picked up haphazard. It was around this same time, during the Texas Centennial in the 1930s, that the first Texas Navy Admiral was commissioned. In 1935 Governor James Allred commissioned the famous dancer Ginger Rogers, who grew up in Fort Worth, as the first Texas Navy Admiral. Rogers was one of the biggest Hollywood stars of the day and had recently completed a Navy-themed film with Fred Astaire, called Follow the Fleet. Many of you will know someone who's been commissioned an admiral in the Texas Navy by the governor, or you may be one yourself. Over the years, the designation gradually shifted away from being a novelty to something more serious, a recognition of personal and professional accomplishment and a commitment to one's community. The men and women who've been commissioned as admirals come from varied backgrounds and personal histories, but they all have shown a demonstrated commitment to our shared legacy as Texans. Being named a Texas Navy Admiral is one of the highest awards that can be bestowed upon a civilian in the state, and carries with it the thanks of the governor and the people of Texas. In 1958 Governor Price Daniel established what became known as the Third Texas Navy, an organization of boat owners that could be called on to protect the integrity of Texas waters and the state's territorial boundaries. Although that mission has faded over the years, the legacy of the Texas Navy is carried on today by the appointment of officers in the Texas Navy by the governor of the state of Texas. The Texas Navy Association was incorporated by the state as a nonprofit corporation in 1972, committed to the preservation and promotion of the history of the Navy of the Republic, to promote travel to historic sites related to Texas history, and to encourage the participation of other organizations and public entities in these same objectives. Since that time, the Texas Navy Association has worked to preserve the history of the Republic's Navy and present that to a wider audience through public presentations, publications, and distribution of materials for use by classroom teachers. In 2017 the TNA produced a short video, How the Texas Navy Saved the Revolution, specifically written for use in conjunction with state curriculum requirements for Texas history. The TNA website includes a variety of historical essays and reproductions of contemporary documents that provide background to the Texas Navy story. The TNA publishes a newsletter that gives updates on the organization itself as well as historical essays and content. The TNA has a seminars program that organizes in-person and online presentations about the history of the Navy and the Republic. The TNA also has a medallion program, to mark the graves of members of the Republic's Navy, as well as offering markers for the graves of modern-day Texas Navy admirals. Full voting membership in the Texas Navy Association is restricted to those who have been commissioned as admirals by the governor, but there are other levels of membership as well, as associate members, as lieutenants, ages 16 to 25, or as commanders, age 26 and up. There are currently eight local chapters, or squadrons, affiliated with the Texas Navy. These are located around the state in major cities, including Houston, Dallas-Fort Worth, Austin, San Antonio, Corpus Christi, and Galveston. Squadrons meet on a regular basis, and often host presentations or programs related to the history of the Texas Navy and the state. As today's Texas Navy Association moves into its second half-century, we look forward to continuing our mission to preserve and promote the historical legacy of the Navy of the Republic in both traditional and innovative ways. And we call on all Texans with a love of history and an interest in the subject to join us in that journey.